الحمد لله الذي أبدا الأفلاك والأرضين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء سيد الكونين إمام الحرمين إمام القبلتين إمام الأتقياء نبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وآدم بين الماء والطين فقد قال الله وتبارك وتعالى في القرآن الكريم والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا عصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الدنيا سجن المؤمن وجنة الكافر صدق الله وصدق رسول ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين أما بعد عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله تعالى عنه نريتس ان انسيدنت in which he says Kuntu one day I was with the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Kuntu ma'an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Wa huwa ya'kulu jammar And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He was eating the jammar Commentators explain the jammar is the tuba That comes from the top of the date palm trees So he enters and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is there and he's consuming this jummar. And Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala says, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he then posed a question. He says, Mina shajar, mina shajari shajaratun, that from amongst the trees that exist, there is one tree. This one tree has a unique similitude to that of a Muslim. So can you all tell me which tree is that? The Sahaba of the Allah Ta'ala and they start giving different answers to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he's sitting there as a young chap, as a young boy, the youngest amongst all of them. He says, the answer came into my mind. But because of that youthfulness that I had, I didn't respond. Until the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he then gave the answer. He then said, An-Nakhla, he then said, the deep palm tree. Hafiz ibn Hajj al-Asqalani, when he mentions his tradition and explains the similitude between that of a believer and that of a date palm tree, he explains and he says, just like how, when you look at this date palm tree, from the time it's small until it becomes big, even the fruits until it spits, every part of it is beneficial. Similarly, is that of a mu'min and a believer is, as well. He is that good, he can make, do amal and he can do things. He can continue to learn. And even after he dies as well, things that he did while alive still remains and becomes as a benefit to him. So therefore, that's an, an amazing quality connected towards this human being and this mu'min and this believer. That while alive, he's productive, he's good. As a small child until he becomes old, he is no longer on the face of the earth and yet still he is of benefit towards individual and towards people. So it's a unique trait and a unique quality associated and connected to a believer. Other ulama and other scholars, they explain that when it is you look closely at this dead palm tree, it's one of those trees that takes a very long time before it bears fruit. It takes about four to eight years before it even gives its first harvest. Like a mu'min and a believer, he requires time and effort and dedication to continue to develop himself, to continue to learn. He requires steadfastness. He needs to shoot his roots deep, just like this tree as well. Become well-grounded and excellent. And when he goes through that phase, then he becomes of real benefit now for the rest of his life. The date palm just doesn't start off giving fruit immediately, but it goes through that process of development. And so let me explain as a mu'min and a believer as well. We also need to continuously develop ourselves. With continuous learning, continuous spirituality, 
always keep on going on and on and on. And like that, a time's also going to come. Like the date palm where it just flourishes, similarly this believer will also become like that as well. In this earthly life, people send their children to school. Some of them, they can't even speak as yet. And they are already in school. They are learning. They go through years upon years upon years of education. At the end of it is just simply to live in this dunya for a few years. They go through all of this education, all of this learning, to live in this dunya for a few years. We as Muslims, we believe in that place called Jannah. And that place called Jannah, it's for eternity. There's no end to that place called Jannah. So how much then should we be exerting ourselves and learning? And working for that development, that excellence, for that eternal world that is actually there. Look at how much effort spent on children, on adults, just to get them to get a job, just to live for a few years. Don't we want to live in Jannah forever? So if we want to live in Jannah forever then, then we also need to dedicate that amount of time as well for that development and for that progress. Well, let me explain. Another similitude between this mu'min and believer and this date palm tree is that this date palm tree, it lives, it survives in the harshest, toughest of environments. Under the blazing sun, the land's rocky and hard. Yet still in that environment, this Muslim, will, this date palm will thrive. It will grow up robust and strong. Shed its shade, give its fruit. All of that in the most harshest of conditions, this date palm is surviving. Similarly, the mu'min and the believer as well. Even if conditions around are difficult and hard, he can also survive as well. He can also dig deep and stand tall. And he can also leave his impression as well, just like that date palm tree. They don't just cave under the environment. They don't just give up under pressure. But rather they stand tall. They stand elegant and they stand proud. Similar is that of a mu'min and a believer as well. So around us conditions sometimes might seem to be difficult and hard. Sometimes in and around conditions might seem to be really trying. And we reflect on that tradition of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Where he said a time's going to come where the practicing of deen is going to be synonymous to the holding on to charcoal. The holding on to burning charcoal. For any person who may have had a barbecue, come the day afterwards, if you go to that charcoal, you realize it's still hot. You can't even touch it. Imagine when you were actually lighting that fire and it was blooming. How hot that must have been. If it touches the skin, it blisters immediately. Imagine the Nabi of Allah is telling us, a time's going to come where practicing Islam is going to become like that. Ulama under this tradition, they explain that every generation of Muslims who come, when they look at their own hal, they think that this tradition refers to them. So from the time of the Sahaba, they will see how difficult life is. They will say, this tradition, this is for us. This got to be that time that is so difficult. Come a few centuries later, Muslims looking at their hal, looking at their conditions, they will think that this tradition must be talking to us. Our own selves looking at the hadith, we might think this condition, this is us that is actually being spoken about. Or let me explain the unique way in the words of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is that for every generation the Nabi of Allah gives hope. That when you reflect and you look back on the people of the past, everybody is thinking, maybe that's the time. So similarly, it gives us hope as well. Maybe this is not the time. A time is going to come that is going to be worse than now. So that makes a person feel good. That yes, I can still handle the situations that I hear. Allah may explain further. But the Nabi of Allah said, a time's going to come where 
even though the deen's going to be so difficult, people are still going to practice it. So therefore, to make dua to Allah, that if that's the time that I live in, just like how you will give people ability to hold on to that bird in charcoal, let me have that ability as well. So therefore, like that date palm, who needs to really dig deep and stand tall, despite the harsh conditions that might be in and around, to really dig deep, to really stand up, to really show ourselves as mu'min and as believers, believing in the promises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all those things connected towards what Allah and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have told us. Another similitude that ulama they give with regards to this mu'min and this believer and that of this date palm tree is that this date palm tree, it stands up tall, taking all that heat, but yet still it gives its shade, it gives its fruit. And as the Nabi of Allah says, every part of it is beneficial. Despite going through all the hardship that it goes through, it doesn't deprive anybody of anything. It gives all of itself, even though it goes through the most amount of hardship. It gives all of itself, whether it's the shade it gives, whether it's the fruit it gives, whether it's the limbs it gives, whether it's the trunk it gives, whether it's the root it gives, whether it's the pits it gives, every single part of it, it gives itself despite going through all that hardship that is there. Similar is that of a mu'min and a believer. Different people, they have different types of expertise and skill. Different people have different types of knowledges. How can I as a mu'min and as a believer utilize that in which Allah has blessed me with for the upliftment and the betterment of deen? How can I give of myself? So much times, little things happen in families, in masjid. So many little things happen. And because of that, we don't give ourselves again. We stop coming to masjid. We stop give good advice. We stop become people encouraging towards good. Then that's not how the deed palm operates. Despite the hardships in and around, it still gives of itself, gives of itself, gives of itself. So much so that the people around may die and the deed palm still remains. So much people might leave. So much people might depart. But the date palm tree, it still remains right there. Still giving of itself. So as a mu'min and as a believer, we have to also have within ourselves these qualities as well, whereby we learn to become people who will give of ourselves, whether it's good advice that we give, whether it's our monies that we give, whether it's our self that we give, whether sometimes we need to come and physically help, we do that. And if we do none of those things, at least we don't become an antagonist. At least we don't become a blockage. At least we don't become an individual and a person who is stopping other individuals from doing good. So the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gave this unique example, connected towards that mu'min and connected towards that believer. Where he is such an individual, every part of him is beneficial, every part of him is good. This mu'min and this believer, despite him taking a few years before fruits are given, it is to utilize our time for our own development, our own learning, our own spiritual upliftment. We need to always keep doing that before it is we are able to flourish. To become such individuals and people, despite the hardships that are in and around, we are still going to remain resolute. We are still going to remain firm. We are still going to remain strong. We are not going to cave under the pressures that are there. We are going to become such individuals and we are going to become such people. That we are going to give some part of ourselves. We are going to give our energies and our strength and our monies. We are going to give our good advice and our nurturing for the upliftment and the excellence and the enhancement of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that tawfiq and that divine help, aid and assistance to become just like that date palm tree. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. 
for our shortcomings and our weaknesses. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite our hearts. May Allah unite us with the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and grant us firdaus with his Habib Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah put it in the hearts of people to forgive us for whatever wrongs we may have done to them. May Allah put it in our hearts as well to forgive people for whatever wrongs they may have done to us.